Hello, my name is Chloe Follen, and this is the second video in the RAISE series. And like that, I'm only going to be looking at just some basics, as in maybe you know some of what I'm about to say already. Maybe some of it will refresh something that you do already know, or maybe something I'll say on just the basics might prompt um, some food for thought. But just to carry on from the first video and the final point I wanted to make, but like that I am trying to keep the video short, well, short for me, but trying to condense them more. And if that means making more videos, perfect, but condensing it a bit more. Following on from the previous video, the last point that I wanted to discuss was the argument over masters releasing rays. And yes, that does happen. I've never said that does not happen. I've never said that's not the case. It sometimes doesn't happen as often, you know, that people think it does. Meaning my main point with the video was even when it's a case that a master is releasing a ray, as in a ray becomes more available. Doesn't mean it wasn't available before. Doesn't mean others maybe weren't working already with that ray. Something always does trickle down first before it's more obvious. But even when that is the case, and it's also important to discuss the context, meaning are we discussing a ray where there is an influence with more of that ray now being available? Or are we talking about a ray that's more impacting an individual? Or are we talking about a ray um, that's influencing a particular group? You know, th there's many levels to that. But if it's taken more the general context that a master is releasing a ray, it doesn't mean that that ray didn't exist already. That master didn't just pull it out from thin air. They are masters of the rays. They are ascended masters. But that ray was already there and the masters know that. They are just highlighting a particular ray for a particular reason and a point in history. I'll say it again, that does happen. But not as often as some people think. It's not like it's happening every week. What does happen that sometimes might give the impression that there's, that, that is happening a little more readily is evolution does happen in groups. Meaning when one ray is impacting one individual, that might be the case for other individuals and they're picking up on the same thing. Or, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's been fully released to all of humanity and it's meant for all of humanity to use. It could just be for a group, it could be for an individual. There's many reasons for something like that happening on many levels. But that brings me back to when there is a claim, and it does happen, where an ascended master would assist with a fray being more widely known about. But here's the thing, when that has come from a master, masters of the wisdom don't incite division. So that brings me back to when someone's going, my ray is better than or the upgrade that I've received is better than. There's two things going on there. Number one, it has not come from a master if that's the way someone's pushing it. Or it has come from a master and that person is translating that contact from where they are still wounded because masters don't dictate. Masters don't self-martyr. And masters don't 
incite division. And it's also important to remember the origin of the rays. The rays are light, that it's fractured light. The rays are fractured light. The rays come from the source of light and light, source, God, spirit. I'm not going to get into semantic arguments over how someone chooses to, what their name is for the source of light because it's all relevant. You know, many people not realizing they are talking about the same thing but that's where you've got to watch out for things because when someone then tries to use what they are picking up on to incite division or be like, well, because I said I'm right, you're wrong, this, that, and the other. Like I said, it's either not the information they think they're receiving is not coming from a master or they are not translating it very well because of where they are wounded. So that's also something to look out for. And this is the other part of it. Masters, masters of the wisdom understand that rays are eternal. Rays are eternal. They'll be here before you. They'll be here after. Rays are eternal. It's light. Rays are fractured light. And the rays, just like the currents of the sea, have their own movement, have their own fluidity, have their own pulse and rhythm. So it is normal that during different cycles of humanity or during different periods of human history, different rays have had more influence because the rays have their own rhythm and pulse. Light has its own heartbeat. Light has its own rhythm. Light has its own impulse. And the masters know that as well. So masters of the wisdom are one with that natural rhythm of light and they understand it's all relative. And they also understand that people translate things differently. And I've come across this whenever I've taught my Rainbow Bridge Readings course, this has cropped up. And like that, I very much enjoy the opportunity to create unity through diversity in vision because perception's an interesting thing. I mean, physical perception alone is an interesting phenomenon all in itself. But the same diversity in physical perception does happen within what I will define in a vision. And just to illustrate that, and this is how I would explain it on the course, let's just say you have a group of physical people, physical eyes now I'm talking about, and they see a particular event. And you know what, you see this in sports matches all the time. You can have a large group of people physically watching an event, and let's take that example. A, uh, a sports match, a sports event. Just because everyone is sitting down, intently watching the same event, it doesn't mean they're going to physically agree on everything they're perceiving. Some people will agree with the referee. Some people will, you know, shout at and abuse the referee. Other people will, on the sidelines, sit there and think they can do better. <laughs> And everything else in between. So when you have so much division in just what is physically seen, that same diversity does occur when it comes to inner vision. And meaning I'll share this, there's an interesting phenomenon when viewing the rays. And I have noticed this when I'm giving guidance, not telling not going, this is how exactly you should see, because, you know, 
when I'm saying this is the suggestion, this is the guidance on perceiving this particular ray for this person's particular ray makeup. This is a suggestion over what to look for. Sometimes people don't exactly see the same way. And it usually comes down to when that happens, and this is so fascinating, it comes down to someone maybe seeing the secondary color of the ray being seen, meaning someone will voluntarily um, sit in front of the group and everyone will practice viewing their ray makeup. And 90% of the time, people, and like that without prompting, are always very careful to not lead, but encourage healthy discussion, where 90% or maybe even 95% of the time, people will, you know, agree with the ray makeup being viewed. But sometimes there is a bit of discrepancy. And when I found that you allow discussion, because it's so interesting to understand someone else's point of view, it usually comes down to that person seeing the secondary color of that ray. Meaning when viewing somebody's um, soul ray, 90% of the group might see orange if it's orange, fifth ray. But then occasion, maybe, maybe one or two in the group will see blue rather than orange. It's fascinating. And I've uh, the same phenomena uh, sometimes happens with green, you know, where most people might see green, one or two other people might see violet. So even though I'm talking in the context of viewing somebody else's rays, when it comes to the fray makeup within a person's spiritual ecology and ray makeup, that's just the way the rays are translating through them. But of course, there are the higher rays of life as well. The two are connected. But you're basically seeing the portion of light, the portion of source they're seeing, or I'll phrase it like this. You are seeing God's lights, God's expression through them. The rays they have soul inherited. And it's amazing to be able to see. But there are sometimes discrepancies in what's seen. Now, bringing me back to describing that in terms of the master's would understand that people would translate differently. So even when it is a case that a master is highlighting an existing ray that is now coming into more influence, whether it's just for an individual or a group or the planet, because there's many levels that can happen on, even when that's the case, they would understand and encourage respect of the diversity of how that influence is perceived and picked up. Which brings me back to the low tolerance I have for when the rays are then used to create division. My rays better, my rays higher frequency. Masters don't encourage that. So where I'm going with this, if you ever have someone standing in front of you going, well, no, I'm right that this is the ray now influencing because my master said or the master that I'm connected with said there's only one of two things going on. It's not a master they're in contact with because a master of the wisdom would never, ever talk like that through someone or encourage someone who's meant to be enlightened to speak like that. So they're either not in contact with a master of the wisdom or they are very badly mistranslating what they are receiving because of where they are still wounded. So I just want to bring up something to kind of highlight this 
um, to help recognise soul influence versus when there's some kind of um, subtle division being created like that. The rays, to me, are an expression of light. So to have something that beautiful be weaponized, no matter how subtle, and what I might mean by weaponized is being it being made or used to create division or versus nature, because once again, masters of the wisdom don't incite versus nature. They have transcended that. They are beyond that. They don't suffer from that. Masters of the wisdom, along with the rays, hope to impulse unity, hope to impulse creativity, hope to impulse unity within diversity. So just to express that a bit more, because it might be helpful to highlight, on the soul1.org website, there is a free PDF download. And it is by someone who was very deeply involved in the Rainbow Bridge techniques, meaning if I have my Rainbow Bridge history correct, because I never had direct contact with uh, Rick Pratter, unfortunately. So I don't want to put words in somebody else's mouth, but I do believe that Rick Pratter did directly, or at some point did directly work with Josephina Norman Stevens. And he was also somebody else because thank goodness, there's quite a few of what I would describe original Rainbow Bridge members out there. It's fantastic. A lot of them did, you know, document group records, they did uh, release articles, they did release their own books, uh, helping to circulate the Stevenson's teachings. So this book, uh, Bridge to Superconsciousness, is a free PDF extract that's available on the website uh, solve1.org. And where I find it very interesting of what I'm talking about, over, you know, spiritual teachings, I'm just looking for the page it's on because of bullet points. Here we go. Spiritual hierarchy and the influence spiritual hierarchy and also meaning the masters of the wisdom. This is their influence. This is how to recognize their influence. And it also gives some food for thought over markers for where to heal and some inspiration for being in action, more heart-centered and aware, because I'll say it again, everybody's learning because then sometimes the um, question comes up, well, Chloe, if a master of the wisdom is aware that someone might mistranslate something, you know, why would that person then receive any impression? Because here we, here's the paradox. Masters of the wisdom know that things are imperfect. We are all trying, we are all growing, we are all evolving. But talking about it on a planetary scale, evolution is not as quick as sometimes people would like to think it is. And anyone that would debate that with me hasn't paid any attention to what's been going on in the world. It doesn't mean there hasn't been good movement forward. It doesn't mean there hasn't been good individual collective, you know, efforts. But it is also important that when there is aspiration, yes, aspire, but then still to acknowledge the reality of what is aspire, keep growing, keep evolving, keep trying, but then do keep a realistic head on your shoulders over exactly where things are. But coming back to recognizing uh, impulsed influence, and this also gives a very good roadmap for how to express more soul qualities, how to, you know, 
be more heart centered, not only with yourself, but with others, but also recognizing the language of hierarchy, but then also the masters of the wisdom. So spiritual hierarchy, this would be the impulse that they would they they would create. This would be the impulse that heaven would help us to aspire to. So number one, encourage the development of constructive individuality, constructive individuality, because the masters understand we are diverse. We're meant to be diverse. Unity within diversity. So spiritual hierarchy are motivated by unselfish service to humanity. And I have seen it happen once or twice where someone's trying to really push their religious agenda or push and fight about whose ray is right or better. And once again, sometimes that's happening because of personal motivations. You know, someone, you know, not understanding that that's not the point. Um, most people understand what I'm saying. Spiritual hierarchy, point out the narrow path of self-effort and individual responsibility as a way of spiritual development, meaning someone will say to you, look, I have a pathway, I have a methodology that can assist you, but that doesn't negate putting your own efforts in because ultimately it's through your own efforts that evolution does occur. Someone can't evolve you. It might be nice to think that. It might be nice to hope for that, but ultimately, as the saying goes, if you want something done, you've got to do it yourself. It doesn't mean you can't be supported. It doesn't mean there isn't a pathway there to that. But ultimately, you know, you are responsible for your development. So ultimately, you know, that happens through experience. No one can take experience away from you. They can sure, certainly give you a good spiritual toolbox to help you along your way. But the spiritual toolbox they give you should be assisting you with helping you with your growth, but still encouraging personal responsibility and finding your path and just assisting you with doing that. Spiritual hierarchy, appeal to reason and common sense, encourages verification through direct personal experience. Spiritual hierarchy encouraging equality of the sexes, um, support the economic prosperity of individuals um, through cooperation and sharing. But in particular, I want to come down to some pointers in particular. Spiritual hierarchy encourage free discussion, free discussion, and rational examination. So the minute somebody goes, well, that's not what I see. You know, not turning around and going, oh, well, my master showed me this and this is what it is. And this is because once again, hierarchy and masters of the wisdom would understand that people are always going to translate things slightly differently. No two people will ever see the same. And it's all relative to the person having the experience. And that should always be respected. And here we go. Encourage the examination of many diverse viewpoints. Claim, oh, this is a big one. Claim no authority, but that of an appeal to reason and logic. Make its instructions and teachings available to all. But like that, here's another one. Subject all its pronouncements to scientific validation and present methods by which others can also validate the results that are claimed. And there's a big one. And that's what I was also talking about in my last video. Once again, 
if someone asks a question such as, well, has this been validated? Are there some sort of case studies? Has this been tracked? Or is this just hearsay and conjecture? Now, once again, there's many viewpoints that I once remember, you know, witnessing a particular debate like this. And one person said, and I bless them for it, they turned around and said they found it fascinating that even when it does come to research, if you look hard enough, you could find research to support any viewpoint. Sometimes, sometimes what they were meaning is, you know, apparently now, apparently there's research out there that, you know, supports that there's a possibility that eating too many bananas might not be good for you, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't eat bananas. They're one of your five a day. But then again, you've got some people that are allergic to bananas. Do you see what I mean? But basically, what that particular paragraph means is, okay, let's just come back to that analogy that someone says, when someone says, my master, uh, through me, is releasing this particular technique, and this is what it does. Or well, I've been shown, and this is what it does. But when you look at it at face value, it's just based on hearsay and conjecture. If someone intelligently then asks, okay, apart from what you're saying, is there any validation? The only person that would have a problem with that is a person that's getting called out. You know, coming back to what I was saying, that sometimes, unfortunately, fluff gets rehashed. Some of it's fine. Some of it's reflective of that point in time it came from. But the truth doesn't mind being asked an intelligent question. The truth doesn't mind going, okay, you've made a good point. Before I go and make such a lofty claim, is there a way that I can have this validated and backed up? So if you're dealing with someone where their fallback is trying to pizzazz you or belittle you because of who they think they're in contact with, I'll say it again, number one, they're either not in contact with an actual master of the wisdom or they are filtering the information very badly. And why that would still happen is because the masters of the wisdom know it's not perfect down here. They know we are imperfect working towards imperfection. They have a lot of patience for it. They've got a lot of compassion for it. They understand that mistranslation will happen or as information comes through, there is a, there might be a tendency that as someone's working through their triggers and wounds, stuff can get mistranslated. They understand that. And like that I might create a separate video talking more about that as well. But like that, if you are interested in reading this, meaning, you know, giving some good pointers. So this is, you know, page 13 across to 14 in Rick Pratter's book where he talks about recognizing uh, heaven expressing itself or light expressing itself freely or hierarchy expressing themselves freely. There's many ways that you could word this. You could also say that this is a really good uh, roadmap for personal conduct or a roadmap for you know practicality of expressing heart-centered awareness so if in any way shape or form if this document interests you it's on the soul1.org website it's available for free and it's you know page 12 across to 13. so like that i do want to keep this video short at least in my definition of the word so just in closing the rays are ultimately an expression of light 
And the rays, yes, have different impulses and frequencies. But the masters of the wisdom, spiritual hierarchy, the ashrams in the heavens, do not encourage division being caused over the rays, or what I would call the rays being weaponized or used to manipulate or pizzazz or glamorize. You know, to me, um, the rays are an expression of light. They're an expression of higher activity. They're an expression of higher love. They're an expression of harmony. They're an expression of divine will. They're an expression of, you know, idealism in terms of the higher ideals we're all aspiring to, to help impulse towards evolution, you know, and finding a way to continue to work towards that and helping to transmute individual collective and global woundings along the way because it's when we need to move through a challenge that we have the potential to evolve the most. The rays are meant to be there to, the rays are there for unity. The rays are there for creativity. The rays are there for all and different people will translate contact differently. And even when it's a case of, you know, array influencing humanity as a whole, when that is actually happening or a master is assisting with array already in existence, influencing humanity more, it doesn't mean everyone's going to pick up on it the same. You know, people that would fall into that, you know, blanket term, you know, seers or have inner vision or clairvoyance, they might see it as, you know, an impulse from a particular master with this particular ray coming through. But for somebody else, it might impulse differently and very practically. I've always got to smile when once again that veil division rears its head where someone might go or think, or well, I'm better than because I can see this <laughs> and I'll give you an example of that let's just say and I'm creating an example here uh, the violet ray coming into influence and let's take the example of a seer who's still working through a, a self-image or self-confidence wound either thinking believing or acting in a way where all I'm better than because I can see this, so I need to tell people about this, otherwise they won't get it. I guarantee you they do, because what will happen is they'll see it as the violet ray coming in, transmuting, breaking up and lifting. But just because someone else doesn't see it, it doesn't mean they're still not being influenced. They all of a sudden might come up with an idea that help creates a breakthrough. So they're not going to translate it as seeing or having a perception of a fray all of a sudden pouring forth. They'll be going about their mundane business, doing their grocery shopping, mainly just living through the five senses. But then all of a sudden, oh, they get this idea and they implement this idea, which helps to break down a bit of the old and create a new pathway. Maybe they're a teacher. They're a normal everyday teacher um, who doesn't see you know, those things. And so they're going about their business, none the wiser to it, but they get an idea. And they go, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could introduce this into the education curriculum or suggest this for the school that I work at? And, but, Maybe there's a bit of red tape to get past or they're concerned it might not be received well, but through the impulse they've received, they do manage to make a good healthy adjustment in the education system and that gets implemented, even if it's just in that school. So just because someone's not perceiving the way you do, 
doesn't mean they don't get it and doesn't mean they still won't be influenced their way or the way they receive. It is all relative. And it's important to listen to all perceptions, respect all ways of seeing, no matter in what context, and work in harmony with the rays for always seeking to see where you can help create more unity, help encourage more creativity, no matter when it's a case of a different point of view. Because when you actually bother to ask the question or think the question, isn't this interesting? I wonder why this is where there is this difference in perception. It's amazing the epiphanies and insights you allow, and then the bridges that you can, the apologies, the gaps you can bridge with a more open mind rather than being on the defense or falling afoul of being a pillar for division and inciting silly arguments and using rays out of context, meaning to create an argument or division or better, whatever the case may be. It's amazing what you can learn when you're open to other points of view and other perceptions. It doesn't mean you've got to ultimately agree. You can agree to disagree, and that can be done in a respectful, healthy manner too. But in closing, I hope this would encourage food for thought over respecting different perceptions, over maybe hoping to create a wider point of view over the rays and ray influence and what that may look like or how that may display or manifest. And on the whole, I hope anything I've shared or what I have shared has been insightful and helpful. Rainbow blessings to all.